sound like she was rapping. Oh my god. So we go out to eat a lot, and a trend that we've noticed is that more and more successful restaurant chains from Asia are opening up locations in America. We're in New York City with our friend Jack, and we're gonna eat at eight different spots. Let's go. We are outside of Flippers in Soho. This is a chain from Japan. Jack, you helped bring this to New York City straight from Japan. What, what, what was the process like? Man, it was crazy. It was just a lot of relationship building, uh, meeting with the owners, bringing them to New York, letting them see our stores. Here it is. All right, Jack, I've seen a lot of hype about these Japanese souffle pancakes. David, have you had it? I have not had them. I've had souffle pancakes in my life. Yeah. yeah I mean, these are the inventors. When yeah. Flippers first opened, there were lines out the door. So. These are the hypest pancakes in the game right now. Flippers, let's check it out. We have arrived here at Flippers. We're at the upstairs. It's super vibey. You guys did a hell of a job bringing that Tokyo energy here. Yeah, yeah. It's very well thought out. The vibe is just amazing. We have a array of pancakes here, and some of them are the more traditional flat style, and then some of these are the Japanese souffle pancakes, which is what Flippers is mostly like famous for. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of pancakes, David. I've been a pancake fan yeah. uh, my entire life, ever since Nate the Great. Let's just go in on this one. This is the, this is the, <laughs> the flat lemon ricotta. ricotta one. Lemon ricotta. So it's a lemon ricotta pancake. Has some almonds or, or walnuts. All right, guys. This is the ricotta honey lemon pancake. Damn, man. Yeah. That's so good. It's light and fluffy ricotta with the lemon on it. Just so good. I love how, you know, that was like a regular pancake and it looked like it had a lot of cream, but it wasn't that heavy. This is the original souffle flippers pancake. Jiggly. I want to just smack it. <laughs> and I think the way that they cook these is pretty interesting, right? They have to whip up the batter really nicely yeah. so it's very airy and then they plop it onto the grill. Yeah. Man, let's try it. This is the original Flippers souffle oh, pancake. God. We go. Mm. I like the, the egg flavor to me, so it almost tastes somewhat like an egg pancake. I could see why people waited in line because I've actually had a souffle pancake from just like a boba shop before because they were trying to copy Flippers. But man, this one is like next level. Uh, that's the best one I've ever had. Man. Yeah. Like that was, that actually exceeded my expectations to be honest. Yo, let's go in on this matcha souffle. All right guys, this is. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was an authentic reaction. Oh, no, that was super real. That was good. Incredible. Whoa. Well, that's my favorite one. Hold up. Oh my god. That syrup is so light. What is that syrup? I Yo, don't know. might have to get John's reaction real quick. Just All right. Fire. Give him a fork. Give him a fork. I thought I wasn't going to be able to try it because you guys were going to finish it. <laughs> Dang, dude. They have savory options, not just sweet. Prosciutto, lettuce, some form of Japanese ranch on top of a regular gigantic pancake. Ooh. It does taste like a French crepe. Yo. <laughs> you know, French recipe. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know if I was gonna like this one. Yeah. I'm enjoying this a lot. Yeah. This is, you guys, their matcha regular pancake. Regular right? pancakes. Because there's a piece of mochi on top. Let's check this out. Oh. <laughs> Yo. Yo, Jack got the ad. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Just good things like that. Man, I think it's. I think it's cool how the Japanese say pancake. They call it pankeki. Mm. That might have been the one for me. Yeah. Really. Ooh. It's different, right? If you guys like matcha, you've got to get this one. In my hand, I think I have the most perfect bite. I have the strawberry cream, I have the souffle pancake, I have the real piece of strawberry, I even have that strawberry preserves. <laughs> that they, oh my gosh. Ooh. That. Prior expectation, what I expected to like the most, I gotta put the lemon ricotta and the matcha flat pancakes up there because they would just hit you with so many different layers of the same thing. That matcha just hit me different. I felt like, oh 
my mouth was just exploding, all these different flavors. When I first took a bite of this, and it was the great, it was the great ratio of like that yolk taste with the egg and a little bit of cream on top. There wasn't too much stuff going on. I thought the souffle pancake really shined in this. All right, guys, if you guys are enjoying that video, please make sure to hit the like button. Help us out on, with the algorithm. You guys, we are outside Le Pain Liquidion. Le Pain. Le Pain? Le Pain Liquidion. What did you order? You said this is a flute pastry? Do, do, do. Jack, you picked this out though. My boy was like, yo, you gotta have a Belgian waffle. That's like a thing. I was like, all right. You gotta have a Belgian waffle. Let's get a little, <laughs> get a little flute. I was about to take a bite off the top. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the souffle pancake was, that's the opposite it's of that. It's different. It's cutting up my mouth. <laughs> I feel very French because I feel like I'm in the French army right now. On a week trip, you just pull this out. Put this in your pocket and just save it for later. Just Yeah. <laughs> so where, where do you think of our, our pastry? Steven's uh, French food joint. What's that? Fr this is Whoa. This is so good. <laughs> it makes me want to play. Alright you guys, we were just in Soho, we had to shoot to the East Village because there are brand new chains being directly ported from Asia all the time. This one is from China, it's called Gel and Chill. But in China, what's the name? It's Tian Xing Xian Sheng. So you guys, this is a brand new dessert coming to the States from Chengdu, China. For me, it's one of my favorite and most refreshing, guilt-free Chinese desserts. We're talking about Bing Fun from Chengdu. Let's, Let's go. go. You brought this from Chengdu, right? Yes. So uh, before this, I kind of like did a lot of research. So I went to Chengdu and did a lot of market research and found this store. Were you worried at all bringing something as traditional as Bing Fun from Chengdu to US? Yes, absolutely, because um, People never know about this before, like yeah. Americans didn't know this at, uh, at all. Overall, Sichuan cuisine is getting so, so popular, popular in America, yeah. and this is part of Sichuan cuisine, Sichuan right? Cuisine. Yeah. So it's like, everything's Sichuan. Wow. So, yo, Jack, this is your first time? First, first time. time. Yeah. I, you know, we know uh, Higher Brothers, the Chengdu Shuochuan Hui Wang. Yeah, Shuochuan Hui, right. Okay. Uh, also, I'm a fan. Oh, yeah. shit, she says she's a Higher Brothers fan. She's a High Brothers fan. Yeah. High Brothers fan of this. Yes. All right, Jack, you got the Rosies. I got the Rosies Revenge. I got the, the Rosies Evil Twin. I'm sorry. Bing Fun. fun. Mm. Jiggly. You know, Asians love the jiggle. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know what it is? I like it because it's kind of like reminds me of those uh, lychee jellies that we used to eat growing up, except it's not oh. too sweet. I would say those lychee jelly cups, a little too sweet for me now. It's so it's so refreshing. Hits the spot, like I just had dessert, but I can keep on eating this. Like, kind of like the souffle pancake. I can just keep on, I can eat like a bucket of this. Jack, are you taking this over a boba? I'll have this over boba any day. I don't like that boba. I'm gonna get a nice mixture of the black sticky rice. Black sticky rice is one of my favorite Asian desserts, actually. That mango. And then I'm gonna try this mango right here. Ooh, that mango looks fresh. Good. Oh, wow. Oh, she sounded like she was rapping. Oh, my God. Guys, we're here at Mi Fun. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, Guys, we're here at Meat Fresh. This spot is from Taiwan. It's from Taichung, Taiwan. And Taichung, guys, also where boba originated from, too. Oh. It's a sweet dessert. Everybody loves it. Let's go inside. Now, let me go through what we got. Let's see what's up. We got the Meat Fresh signature. This is grass herbal jelly. You got the black rice dessert. And like we said, black rice is very popular around Asia, East Asia, and particularly also Southeast Asia. But you got the little scoop of uh, Hong Dao right here. You know what's interesting? And then here, you have the Taiwanese tofu fa, but in Cantonese we would call it tofu fa. Meat fresh. It tastes like the post Chinese food dinner. Mm. These flavors are like in a way an elevated version of something I ate when I was a kid. Very traditional flavors. Oh, it's super traditional. This Hong Dao chicken. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Oh, you got a lightsaber? Uh, that's the red envelope. Oh, yes. Yeah. Are you the manager? Uh, I'm the owner, oh, not the manager. Oh, Andrew, nice to meet you. Two female Asian entrepreneurs taking over concepts from Asia. Maybe it takes a female touch 
to bring an Asian concept to the States without without just seeming like a bunch of Asian goons. Yeah. <laughs> Alright you guys, this is not a chain from Asia, but it is still something that is foreign to New York, Andrew. It's from out of town. It's from Detroit. What do you got here? Vodka. Vodka, this is the pep. Yeah, and I, I, apparently there's uh, these like square slices that are like cooked in a little pan. That's like the new thing. Oh, like little, not the big pan, but the little one. Let's see. Mmm. This pep one is fire. Dave, I love how uh, the bottom is actually really crispy and then the inside is really fluffy. I like it as a switch up, but I would still go with New York. If you made it thick. All right, you know why? Last thing. The thing about thick crust pizza is that it starts to kind of taste like a breadstick more than a flat pan pizza. So I think for me, I actually really like these toppings. I like the flavor, but I would still go for a thinner crust. Detroit, baby. All right, Andrew, this is not necessarily a direct chain from Asia, but it is directly porting an item that New York has never seen before from Asia. Yes, we are talking about the Janbing, the famous Chinese crepe. It's not always about somebody in America franchising a chain from Asia, but a lot of people are now seeing something that they ate in Asia or have had over there, and then they're literally just bringing it over and starting their own single shop. But there may be some slight adjustments, obviously, for the different demographics of America. And hey, you look like the emoji <laughs> from the iPhone. You know what I'm talking about, the 20? emoji? <laughs> never seen that before. <laughs> Yo, Andrew, when I was trying to get an authenticity percentage out of him, of course, my Dongbei, you know how the Dongbei guys are. He said, a hundred. Very confident, man. If I know one thing about Dongbei people. Jim Bing. Thought the addition of the pickles did a lot. I'm into it, man. Delicious. Mm. What has allowed them to capture the authentic flavors of Beijing with the Tianmian Zhang and everything so perfectly? I felt like the ratios are like on point. The ratios of the different ingredients, that affects the flavors. You can have relatively the same ingredients in something, but if the ratios are off, it's not even gonna taste right. I mean, you got a guy who's from China who probably grew up eating some form of jam bings growing up, and he's making them here in New York. So I have no reason to believe that it's not authentic. This is the best jam bing I've ever had in America. With the addition of the duck, this is one of the best jimbings I've ever had, period. Mm. Hey, shout out to Tenzin, the Tibetan, and his Chinese wife, the jimbing shop. David, we are outside of another authentic food from Asia, but it's not open necessarily by a chain store. This is one of the more popular chains kind of popping up around New York. We are on St. Mark's. This is Joe's Rice Rolls. Let's check this out. I would say that this style of elevated trunk fun, Andrew, really only started popping up a year ago. Yeah. What I like about the flavors, David, there's a lot going on. There's a little bit of soy sauce, a little bit of sesame sauce, curry on top of that, and there's oh, there's pork and hamai. Hamai. I think the hamai is setting it on fire. You really need that strong kind of seafood flavor. Honestly, there's a lot going on. There's just a lot of flavor. It's delicious. Honestly, it is delicious. Try it, Andrew. We do have to admit. This trunk fun is not cheap. No, 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 no. This, with the fishball edition, was about $13. Woo! However, I think it's worth it. And every time I'm on St. Mark's, Andrew, I think this is, Andrew, on this trip to New York, I think this is our like third or fourth time getting this. Andrew, our last and final spot from the port from Asia food crawl is Dough Club. Mm. Because we are gonna be having Japanese mochi donuts. This is opened up by the same people who did Taiyaki. I, mean, I, I think uh, the owners of this, man, they're really cool people. They, they know how to kind of take the, and particularly, I mean, they have a trend of taking the Japanese things that are popular and then putting them here in Chinatown, which I think is really cool. And yes, these are super trendy. From LA to New York, mochi donuts are popping, guys. Let's go try them. We're looking at the Ponder Ring Donuts from Dough Club. They feel like mochi, Andrew, but they're not. Okay, let's try this. Mm. Oh, you're having the bacon right now? I'm gonna mm. skip the head. Oh, man. These are a lot easier to eat than the actual mochi ones. Sometimes the mochi ones get a little heavy, but you know, for me, Dave, I'm not a, a huge mochi guy, so for me, the mochi mochi ones were a little too much. So this is purple pebble and macho. Favorite one, 
Uh, donuts. For me, actually, the cookies and cream is my favorite. I've had a lot of cookie and cream donuts, whether we're talking to Voodoo Donuts, Blue Star Donuts in Portland. This was easily the best one that I've had. Okay, that bacon one that I had, that one um, hit my mouth differently. You know, it just like, it, it, the amount of flavor and the salt that all ran together was the most unique. These are the cutest donuts in here. Oh, wow, very fluffy. Not too thick, a little chewy. I'm gonna go ahead and say that these are my favorite donuts I've ever had. Yo, these are great. They're just, you can squeeze them, they're airy, but they're chewy. I will say it, I mess with these donuts, man. These are good. All right, you guys, Andrew, there's no better way to take out a direct from Asia food crawl other than a ruby hot chocolate in an Earl Grey toffee milkshake. It's good to get a little fluffiness in your life sometimes. You can't always it. be uh, in the streets like most Asians are. <laughs> You guys, this is really dope. I, I do think that this is more, this is the elevation. This is Asian Americans bringing concepts from Asia that seem eons beyond what we have available to us, porting it over. Obviously, it's all about the execution. Sort of like you were saying earlier, I do not think the Japanese are mad that people are doing Japanese style Western donuts. Nowadays, in 2020, there's no laws like, oh, you have to have heritage from that country to bring a brand or a concept or an item from that country over here. I think what should exist is a constant effort to pay homage and do it justice, which I do think these all these chains that we covered today did do. All right, you guys, that does it for our chain from Asia now being poured into America. I guess you could say it's the... Please let us know in the comment section below another concept from Asia that needs to make its way one for one to the US. Dave, you got one? I know one of your favorite restaurants from Singapore, that Toast has the yeah. Toast box could yeah. come over, and maybe the only thing they'd have to change is they'd have to cut off some of the high labor items on the menu. You know what is funny that I would like to see come to America are some of the Asian items from the fast food chains over there to come over here, like some of the Chinese McDonald's items. Talk about the McSpicy? Yeah, the Chinese McSpicy. If there's one sandwich you need to get at the Chinese McDonald's, it is this right here. Thanks for watching this video. We are in New York City as of right now. But until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. If you guys wanted to give me some food Please to try, try out, <laughs> I'll tell you if it's good or not. Yeah, we got some desserts here.